Pedro from me and PureX, I'm here today with the legend, Nilo of Insomnium, to talk about the upcoming EP, Argent Moon, out September 17th on Century Media. How are you doing today? Thank you, sir. All good. It's my birthday. I, I know. I, I was I was yeah. going to wait. I was, I was going to sing you happy birthday, but you kind of ruined the surprise. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, I'm 42. Still going strong. Uh, we had actually bad rehearsals today and uh, I've got some cake and uh, presents and now I'm spending the evening doing interviews. All good. You're, you're 42, but you don't look a day over 22. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. you I you, only you... feel like 62. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think that's a Finnish thing. You know, nothing matches. You look one age, you are a different age, and you feel like a completely different age. It's a finished thing, for, for sure. <laughs> so let's talk about the EP. And the first question that I have for you is, where did the inspiration for this EP start to brew, or where was it born? Well, it was born from the anxiety and stress that this pandemic brought to us last year so uh when we had to cancel the u.s tour after one show quickly returned to finland while we still could and then we were sitting home and wondering what the hell to do next nobody knew how long this will last nobody still <laughs> does <laughs> uh and we kind of thought okay we can't play shows but we have to do something uh we will just get crazy uh we'll have to keep making music. And uh, I think the plan was that we want to get something released pretty soon. So, okay, let's, that, should we do one song or two? Okay, let's make an EP, four songs, that sounds good. And then we planned with Century Media, okay, we'll release four singles, release them one by one. And then in the end, there waits the physical EP, so. Our fans would get some joy to their lives every every now and then, and we would get something to do. And uh, I think pretty soon we got this idea that it's going to be a mellow, ballad sort of somber, easygoing EP, not just for random songs, but there has to be some theme. And that thing was that they are all kind of easy, easy in in some of them songs. That's so how it started. In, in that in that line of thought, and in, in that line of thought in terms of having a theme, how do you see the title of the EP connecting with the individual uh, content of these four songs? Well, the title Argent Moon comes from, I don't know if you guys over there know this Italian song. I think it's Luna di Madre or something like that. And there's a Finnish version of that here, which is really popular kind of tango style of song and all the old folks know it and love it. And translated it's Argent Moon or Silvery Moon. And uh, I don't know how it actually started, but it was kind of a joke that we should make a version of that song. Uh, Silvery Moon, Argent Moon. But uh, the joke got out of hand, and uh, <laughs> I, I actually started making kind of new version of that story and kind of expand the idea that what else might happen here, that this guy is looking at the moon and, and thinking about his love, who's gone now, and it's only that thing repeated in that song but I wanted to have something else and I extended the story and made kind of insomnium song insomnium story out of that thing and, uh, and the title became the conjurer for that song but Argent Moon came kind of the title for the whole whole EP because it sounds cool so would you qualify this EP as like a, a concept EP or, or is it more like a theme driven EP? Theme driven, probably like musically, there is an idea that, okay, let's make four ballad songs. Mm -hmm. 
but the stories are individual stories, uh, which well they they could be from this same protagonist who has messed up his own life and made grave mistakes and everything is ruined and it's his own fault. Kind of insomnia song and yeah, what yeah, they yeah. are normally. Yeah. Because the reason I'm asking you that is because after listening to the EP, uh, I, I kind of had a few, it felt to me like there was a little bit more of a connection between these tracks that at, at first glance, they are individual, but you could also put them in the way that you just described in terms of having four different stages that a person could could navigate through through a, a, a period of time. So to me, the, the yes, four yes. tracks felt a little bit more connected in terms of where it starts and where it finishes than just at first glance, just, you know, just four songs on an EP. I honestly didn't think you guys were the kind of band that would just throw four songs into an EP without having something else underneath it all. I mean, you, you guys are a little bit more complex than that. Yeah, we are complex guys. <laughs> but of course, with the titles and everything, the Conjuro, the Antagonist, the Wanderer, the Reticent, there was this theme that, okay, these songs belong together and there is this story. And I've written three of the lyrics. Ville has made lyrics for the Reticent. And that's that song is maybe more about the COVID anxiety, really, like isolation and staying home and getting crazy. Mm -hmm. and, from those feelings and then these three songs that i did the lyrics for they are more about this uh, well it's it's a bit different but but they can all be seen as being together and telling the story of the same same dude actually H having an ep like this does it give you a little bit more freedom creatively versus when you have to working on a full length record I don't know. It's a bit different, of course. It's just four songs. It's easier to plan the whole thing and put it together. And uh, and it was different. Like, we have never done an EP release before. Like, in the 90s, all our favorite bands, they released EPs, and it was a cool thing. But nowadays, it's really rare. In Spotify times, I don't know if anybody releases EPs, but... That was quite rare, but we wanted to try it. Um, it, was just some, it. it was just something that you guys wanted to do. I think it's the right time for it anyways. Uh, the, the, the whole pandemic, the whole break in terms of what you guys were able and not able to do. I think the CP fits in there like a hand in the glove, if you will. Uh, when you start yeah. designing the CP, the acoustic guitar sound that you guys added to it, it's really uh, one of the main elements that starts to peek its head at every single turn. Yeah. What do you try to bring out with that sound? Do you, are you trying to impact the soundscape of the tracks or are you trying to impact the atmosphere of the tracks or perhaps both? Perhaps both, but uh, maybe you should ask the guitarist that <laughs> what is really the idea behind that guitar sound. But, uh, well, acoustic guitars, they've always been a part of Insomnium Sound, right from the first, I think our very first album starts with acoustic guitar, the very first thing you hear, and that's always been there. It's kind of, we have the heavy stuff, the chaos and brutality, and then we have the really easygoing, somber acoustic guitars and synth layers there, and we combine them, and that's the Insomnium thing. And for, for this release, that chaos and blast beat is missing, but uh, we haven't for, forget, forget about that. It's coming back. And uh, how, this was how, are, <laughs> how are you dealing, since you're mentioning that, how are you dealing with some of the feedback from fans that are kind of wondering where, where is Insomnium going with these songs, <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah. I've seen a couple of those comments that people are kind of a little bit afraid that, okay, is this the radio friendly insomnium now? What is going on? But I can assure everyone that this was an experimental EP with this kind of ballad material. 
and there will be more heavy stuff coming the normal heavy stuff coming with the next album like we haven't changed our style don't worry uh, on this ep another thing that becomes really predominant is uh yanni on vocals how, how was that dynamic uh, how did how did you find that partnership well the, the guy is amazing amazing vocalist and i don't know if people have realized that before uh before he joined insomnium but actually he he's a really good vocalist and uh now that he has been in our live setup like five years already so he, he has taken that role on stage as well singing all the, all the clean parts and out of all of us he's the best clean singer for sure other guys are good as well but Yanni, Yanni is clearly the golden throat, as we would say in Finland. <laughs> I, I want to pick your brain a little bit about the four songs, starting off with The Conjurer. Do, do you feel like The Conjurer is the more traditional, insomnium-sounding track of all four? Yes, it is. And I think that's the reason why we want it to be the first one that's released, so that it feels probably the most familiar it's the kind of insomnium people expect to hear and then it gets more experimental yeah i was just and, gonna uh, say because the, the next one the the reticent is that's where that's where everything changes that's where the tides turn <laughs> yeah yeah the, yeah there there aren't even there are very little clean vocals in the country where, but then it turns that there's very little of my vocals in the reticent, only the, the chorus rolling thing. And uh, the antagonists also, it's kind of 50-50, my vocals and Yanni, Yanni's vocals, so. With, with the antagonist, the, the, the part that really uh, hit home to me was that combination of the acoustic guitar and Yanni's vocals, the, the combo of those two elements together simultaneously working together how, how did you see that portion of the song is, is do you see that as being kind of the heartbeat of that track yeah it's the chorus it's the kind of the yeah the highlights highlight part of the song of course uh, uh, i really like the song it's actually my, mine and yanni's song we did it together and it, a bit different kind of insomnium song, but it still sounds like us, I would say. I think that's true of all four songs. I mean, to, to different degrees, but I think all four of them, the DNA of the band is still present across all four tracks. And then to bring that DNA home, you have the Wanderer at the end that really gives a sense of finality to the journey that started with The Conjurer. There's almost a sense of walking towards the sunset or, you know, like it, it just really has this climatic ending that it really brings you towards it uh th does that push that song into being the best song to close off these four tracks in terms of how it ends yeah yeah the en ending is really good and it has a special vibe in it and it's kind of hard to continue anywhere after that ending so it felt like the last the final track out of these four easily also the wanderer is a bit different kind of insomnium track like these all are these all four are different kind of insomnium ballads so and that's how we want to do things we don't want to keep doing the same songs over and over again but we try to find some new angles and still sound like insomnium as an artist after you put an ep like this together something that was very different for you guys, for the fans, uh, very, very fresh. What do you walk away with the most out of it? Like, what, what is the most rewarding aspect of putting an EP like this together? Tough question. Uh, well, I want to see it physically and hold it in my, in my hands and smell it and <laughs> fondle it. And then i then i understand that we 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 have done it actually and we have a new well a new baby so it's a special feeling when you actually hold it it's not enough just to 
hear it on Spotify or YouTube. You have to have it in your hands. We are so old school, to be honest. It. Then the, you the, feel that the fact that you guys released one song at a time with the video and everything was this cumbersome or or was this a process that worked really well because there's only four songs and and at the same time it allowed you guys to stay connected with the fans through during a period of time that there was not a lot of things really happening yeah that was the reason that, that uh every two months there would be something for our fans that we can share we have a new song here check it out It, during times like these, like that's what we wanted to achieve with this. And uh, making four videos, of course, it was a well. We had had, had shoot four videos, but uh, we work with excellent directors, and uh, it wasn't that. Since we don't have a, tours and shows, what else to do than shoot yeah. videos, like? <laughs> This year, we played three shows and shot four music videos. So that's the ratio. <laughs> I, 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 today is your birthday, so I really don't want to uh, keep you away from your cake. Uh, I, I, I'm, I'm trying. I to... ate it already. <laughs> <laughs> it was good then. It was a good. It cake. was really good. Like, it was a really good cake. So very today, sweet. Today on your birthday, uh, I really want to minimize the time that you're spending uh, on, on camera so that you can enjoy it with your family and everything. So I have one more question for you. Uh, one of the beauties of Insomnium when it comes to your music is that I think when you guys release a record, uh, it, there's always a picture that's painted with that album. Uh, maybe sometimes you guys have a picture that you have in your mind of what you want the album to represent. And then there's also the picture that us as the fans Uh, interpreted in our own way from the art that you put out there because it, it stops being your music once it goes out into the world and it becomes kind of our music we all we all get to put our own feedback our own dna into how we feel towards your music so when you look at this ep when you look at how different it is when you look at this collection of insomnium ballads i think that's that's a nice way of, of putting it yeah. what picture are you hoping the fans get from it You have tough questions today, Pedro. <laughs> It's your birthday. <laughs> <laughs> It is. Uh, well, I, I, I hope it gives people hope, actually. And in these dark times that, that actually our arts could help people get through this, all this shit. And like, personally, I, I get so much out of books and movies and music and all that stuff and uh it really helps helps me get through every single day and now in this kind of pandemic time it's even more important and uh i hope our music even a little bit helps some of our fans to get through through here and they remember that okay it was a shitty year but at least if some new released new music or and that was a cool thing or something like that i don't know but i i hope our music can a little bit help some some people out there uh, I, i think that's a beautiful thing and, and as a fan of your music i definitely can say that the fact that september brings your ep around makes already the month of september slightly brighter even though that's kind of the start of winter so it, it makes it a little bit brighter Yeah, exactly. If it's even a little bit brighter day when you hear the new Insomnium song or see the new video, or then they, we have done our job well. Well, Nilo, thank you very much for your time today. Happy birthday once again. Like I said before, thank you, you don't Pedro. look at day over 22. You look amazing. <laughs> it's all the sauna. <laughs> thank you. It's all the sauna, yes. <laughs> the thank you very much secret. for your time. All the best. Thank you, Pedro. Thank you. Bye.